Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplant. It's good to have you with us this morning. We've got a great show lined up for you. It's not a Monday. I know it feels like a Monday, but it's a Tuesday. It's a special Tuesday, two for Tuesday, two, two of 22. That only happens once in a lifetime. It ain't going to happen again, folks. So uh, enjoy it while you can. Uh, we've got a great show lined up. We've got a couple of special guests we'll get to in just a moment. But my co-host, Dr. Tony Rayo Sutherland, is joining me this morning. Tony, good to see you on the special two for Tuesday. Two, two, two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Two, it's two, good. Two, two. Yep. It, two, two. It's good to see you too, too. Okay. Yep. Anyways, <laughs> I'll try that again. Uh, yeah. The weather doesn't look too good though out there, unfortunately, but uh, hey, we're inside. It's fine. Yeah, well, it's, you know, we're back in the summerish weather pattern, but it's supposed to get cold by the end of the week. That's uh, winter in Houston as we love it. Hey, thanks for those of you watching us on Facebook Live and, and uh, also YouTube. You can catch us most weekdays when HCC is in session at 10 a.m. live on Facebook and YouTube, but you can also find us on HCC TV. We're on at noon, 5 and 10 p.m. and across all social media platforms, Tony. Yes, just look for Houston Community College District on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I should have that down by now. I've said the same thing over and over again, but those are the places you go for social media. But be sure to look for Houston Community College District. Don't just look for HCC because there's a bunch of those. Houston Community College District and follow us. All right, Tony, you'll be speaking with this next guest. Uh, she's from our student life department. Uh, Sharday Campbell is the strategic enrollment communications and social media manager. Good to see you, Sharday. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. I know you guys have had a lot of things going on for Black History Month. Of course, we're celebrating that. And you're maybe going to bring us up to speed with the events you've had and things that are still forthcoming, right? Absolutely. Can't wait. All right. Thanks, Sharday. We're going to be with you in about 10 minutes. So grab some coffee. We'll be with you shortly. I know uh, you know this next guest. Chef Mark Holly is the owner of Davis Street at Herman Park. He's a Goldman Sachs grad, and he's also our two Tasty Tuesday guest. Chef, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Todd. Yeah, thanks for having, thanks for being on the show. First off, tell us about the restaurant. Um, I know people know you're near Herman, Herman Park. Tell us what it's all about and how long you've been open, where they can find you exactly. Okay, well, um, here at Davis Street, um, we're open um, for dinner Tuesday to Thursday. And we're also, we do a New Orleans style uh, Sunday brunch. And we also have a Sunday supper. Um, it's more of an upscale seafood and steakhouse, a prime steakhouse. Uh, some of the things you can look forward to is um, oysters on the half shell, charbroiled oysters, uh, seafood gumbo. We do several ceviches. We also do a Jamaican uh, uh, curry style uh, mussels. And we still do whole fish uh, prepared uh, with many uh, preparations. And I know you're going to be doing something with some fish right now, and and uh, you've got a special dish you're creating for us. Um, Hoppin' John's, I'm a fan of that. Maybe you can tell us. Why don't you go ahead and get started? I got a few more questions while you're going. Okay, so Hoppin' John um, was um, actually um, derived somewhere around uh, the early 1900s, uh, probably during slavery. Uh, it's associated with some of the southern coastal states such as Charleston and Georgia. And essentially what it is, is uh, peas and rice. Um, I know everyone is familiar with uh, their black eyed peas and rice for New Year's Day, you yep. know, to get a little good luck. Well, that's kind of the essence of this old traditional dish. Okay. Um, here, it's, it doesn't, is it, is it a tough dish to put together? Or do you prepare your beans ahead of time? How does that work? No, it's very simple. The thing that you will prepare ahead of time is the rice, and then the beans can be blanched. Everything else is uh, fairly simple. I do want to go over the ingredients. We have a little yeah. ham hock, and I brought a ham hock with me, and essentially it's the lower part of a pig that's been smoked, and then we boil that in water until it loosens up, and then we put that into the greens that we're going to go over later. 
uh, but we have some ham hock, a little shallots, and garlic. So let's see if we can get this started. We're going to take some shallot and garlic. And Chef, We're you've been also, on the Cuban scene for 30 years now, correct? Yes. So I started um, working with the Brennan's family. Right. I worked here at Brennan's of Houston and uh, also Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. I also opened a Peche restaurant with uh, Johnny Caraba and Damian Mandola. And I was the executive chef and I was there for 12 years. And then I did my namesake, Holly's Seafood Restaurant and Oyster Bar. Uh, I was the owner and I was the chef and I was there for four years. And so um, it's been a great adventure. And Davis Street is kind of all three of those places melted into one. So you can uh, get some New Orleans style food, but I imagine also a little bit of a Texas twist to things as well. Absolutely. Along with, with uh, Southern dishes as well. So here at the restaurant, we, uh, uh, it is Black History Month. And yeah. uh, to our credit, we celebrate Black history every Sunday by doing Sunday supper. So my mom uh, kind of gave me this, this whole idea of growing up. She was from Georgia, and she used to prepare an array of dishes. And she would spread them out on the table. Everyone would come to dinner, and then it would be family style, where everyone just kind of dug in and, and, and got a portion or two. And um, so we, we celebrate that at Davis Street on Sunday, only from 5 until 8. Did you, now correct me if I'm wrong, but did I read something correctly years ago about a famous fried chicken dinner that you used to do? Yes. So we started the fried chicken dinner, and what I did, I added the ham hock, the peas with shallots and garlic. Now right. I'm incorporating rice. This particular rice is jasmine rice. And then I'm going to add some pot liquor. Pot liquor is like I mentioned, the residue from the greens. Um, with our greens, we actually use collard greens, we use bok choy, we also use a little kimchi paste. Okay. And it kind of gives it an unusual, kind of a spicy and tart green. The bok choy is not as strong as the collard, so it kind of mellows it out a little bit. So I'm adding a little that to bring this dish together. Um, so at Holly's, we did uh, exclusive fried chickens on oh, yeah. Sunday. Yep. And uh, so I kind of brought the concept to Davis Street where uh, not only there's fried chicken, but there's a pork chop uh, selection. There's also blackened um, uh, flounder with an etouffee sauce. There's a little meat. Sometimes we do a chicken fried steak. Sometimes we do a little skirt steak with a little chimichurri. But um, all of that is served with different sides, such as right. truffle mac macaroni and cheese, uh, the kimchi collards, the um, Hoppin' and John, also the uh, crispy Brussels sprouts, and the roasted garlic mashed potato. And if to finish was... all of that off, there is a dessert. So it is a three-course meal, and the dessert is usually our famous coconut cake. Is it, is it, e is it tough to get... Uh, spaces for that Sunday night supper? Because I know the fried chicken dinner used to be uh, legendary from what I remember reading about it. I think it was in the days of the Houston Press. They'd write yes. about it. Well, it was exclusive and um, it was kind of at the era when fried chicken was just everything to people. It was oh, kind of yeah. like the bacon area and so on. And so, uh, no, we don't really have that much of a problem getting everyone in. Okay. It is truly successful and truly worth the visit. So here's, you want to hit this right quick. We added a little Creole seasoning. We added a little butter wow. and we added a little fresh herbs. So it took me probably five or six minutes to make this Hoppin' John. And you can use any type of pea, whether it's black eyed pea, chowder right. pea, we're using lady creamer peas because they're indigenous to uh, Texas. And um, it's um, a very good tradition here at the restaurant as well. And you'll find that so, maybe at uh, for your Sunday night suppers? Yes, yes. We do have that as one of the signs for our Sunday night supper. Uh, also, 
uh, we do, I want to mention, we do a um, guest chef um, every quarter, and we invite someone um, usually uh, of color and who normally wouldn't get the platform to come on and have a dinner or whatever, and usually associated to the industry, such as a cookbook author, chef, or whatever. This week, we have J.C. Ricks from Dandelion Cafe is coming, and he's kind of doing his whole menu from 5 to 8 that night. Um, but uh, just look forward to uh, to seeing more chefs come to the city and um, for, for that Sunday event. Also, we have a Mardi Gras dinner, which is on March the 1st. Um, we have Black Houston Restaurant Week, which is the first week. I believe it's the 5th through the 10th or the 8th through the 12th of April. And so just stay tuned. Um, so what I want to do is I want to present the final dish. Wow. And we did have, we didn't go over the redfish. I mentioned that we had some Creole seasoning. We actually blackened it. And then the rice is here on the side. We have the kimchi collards. Here's the redfish. Kind of take a look at that. Incredible. Wow. End, we will take some pot liquor, which kind of lightens it up. You know, soul food traditionally is yeah. thicker sauces, gravies, and etc. Well, we're trying to kind of lighten up the plate a little bit. And in this case, we have some pot liquor from the greens with the kimchi, and it's reduced and it becomes a very light sauce. Chef, that looks incredible. Chef Mark Holly, he's the owner of the Davis Street at Herman Park. He's also a Goldman Sachs grad. And our Tasty Tuesday guest, his Sunday suppers are legendary. So, Chef, I got to get out there and see you. Maybe get some of that fried chicken. And, uh, you know, a pork chop sounds pretty good. I haven't had a good pork chop in a while. All right. Looking forward to it, Todd. Chef, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Hi. I can smell that from here. I know. I know. I I can know. Smell it. it's, 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 I'm telling you, it's tough, <laughs> you know, not being able to be there in person. But boy, that's oh, incredible, please. Tony. And I know your next guest is a big fan of Chef Holly. So we're going to oh, go yes. ahead and turn it over to you and Charday. Maybe charday has been there for Sunday supper. Charday Campbell, she's strategic enrollment communications and social media manager. Welcome to the show again, Charday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I I was sharing with Chef Holly. I haven't made, had the opportunity to get to his new location. I've been to his uh, previous location, which is near our um, administration, which was near our administration building downtown. So I'm excited. But, you know, it's a part of black black culture. Sunday supper is a part of black culture and I was just my 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 taste buds were just salivating. It's watering. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's, <Wait. laughs> it sounded like home. <laughs> I know, I know. Well um you student life, you represent so many things, but of course student life. Student life is doing so many things this month for Black History Month. You want to tell us a little bit about some of those things that are still coming and have happened and stuff like that. <laughs> yes, yes. So Student Life has um, always been so intentional about hitting every commemorative month to make sure that there is programming to help students who uh, who are part of those identities and also those who aren't to learn about different cultures and identities. So uh, the celebration of Black History Month, um, they like to call it for the culture is their focus. And so we've been kicking off things all month. Um, last week, we had uh, a couple of events and we have some scheduled this week. So from a, um, I know we had uh, racism as a public health crisis. A lot of people may not realize that the CDC um, declared racism as a public health crisis and looking at uh, how racism impacts the quality of care for African-Americans and impacts um, their health outcomes. Um, but we like to say we have a good mix of like education and entertainment. So that same day we had um, a line dancing class. We've uh, had classes around mental health, uh, which is certainly not exclusive to the black community, but looking at it through the lens uh, of, of trauma that African-Americans have faced 
um, over the years and how we're processing that. Um, we had a quite a big deal, a lot of events of when you see something happen on the news and you see trauma and violence to black bodies, that does something to your psyche, um, as well as a lot of other external factors that may affect your mental health. So we wanted to make sure we were intentional um, about having an event around that and bringing in a counselor to give people tools uh, to work through some things. Um, this yeah, week sometimes we have, if something doesn't hit you directly, it, right. in, it in fact hits you indirectly, and you may not realize that. Yeah, you don't know, you don't realize how the stress is man, manifesting in your body. I mean, it's not, we're intentionally pausing for Black History Month, but that is that is true for everyone. Um, but it's, uh, you know, being, being sensitive to the fact that although uh, others are experiencing it, it's not their lived experience. So it's like two things uh, going on there. So we wanted to make sure that we bought in some licensed professionals to have that conversation. But you're absolutely right. Stress is a silent killer, as they say. So you don't even realize how it's showing up. Um, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Tell us about the other uh, Black History Month things. Uh, in addition to what Student Life's doing. Right. So this week we have Spoken Word and Black Literature Matters. So those are two things that are going to be going on a little mix of what we like to call edutainment, education and education. Uh, uh, and entertainment. And then throughout the whole month, um, we are doing a, a, a history contest. Black history is American history. And uh, we are asking students to submit videos about how they are commemorating Black History Month and why it is so important to commemorate Black History Month. And the top 10 videos will receive a $100 gift card to use at places of their choice. So a little bit of incentive, but still a great initiative, even if there wasn't one. So we're really excited to see the videos. That contest will go through next Monday. So it is still time to get your videos in. That's going to be wonderful. Now, the, there's the African-American Resource Group. What What is that? Yes. So a little bit um, separate from so typically student life is, as I shared earlier, has always had programming around this. But um, as an institution under uh, the leadership of our new chief diversity officer, Dr. Donna Davis, in collaboration with the Office, Office of Institutional Equity um, with Renee Mack, um, are co-chairing the, the inaugural African-American resource group of uh, employees who have gotten together to inform um, how, where their opportunities across the institution to um, have these program, have this programming, the content that you all are doing on HCC TV all month, helping you all find guests and things of that nature. So an intentional effort around um, celebrating and commemorating Black History Month, one of the things that came out of that group that I am so proud of, because <laughs> I worked on personally, is having an official Black History Month calendar. Of ah, course, there are things that student life does, but there are people across the institution um, from instruction to the library, uh, to our communications offices, um, who are doing programs who are hosting uh, Black History Month events that may not necessarily get captured by what Student Life is doing. So we wanted one place where people can go learn about all that the institution um, is doing. And if um, anyone wants to visit that page, they can visit hccs.edu slash Black History Month. Um, to view the calendar and see who else contributed as a member of the African American Resource Group. I think that's so great to have one place to go look for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that makes it a whole lot easier. And um, you have a playbacks of uh, Black History Month, a playlist. Now, where is this playlist? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, I. Um, Shout, shout out to uh, to Justin uh, Boyd, <laughs> who I called and I said, listen, you are uploading all of the wonderful content that HCC TV is doing around Black History Month. But I want to be able to point people to one place in case they miss the segment of Up to the Minute, in case they miss the playback of, of any other uh, specific Black History Month 
programming that we can take them to one playlist. That playlist exists on YouTube. And when you go to hccs.edu slash Black History Month, you'll see a link to it at the bottom of the page under resources where people can access it. Or they can visit the YouTube channel like you told them in the beginning of the segment (laughs) and uh, find the playlist for all of the Black History Month content. Well, there's so many ways to to check it out. And that's important because if you can't find it one way, you can find it another way. Um, And tell us this, I think, is an important question. Uh, What do you hope people will walk away with once they attend or see one of these uh, Black History Month events? Yes, yes. Thank you for that question. Um, From Black Americans, great accomplishments, contributions, lived experiences and triumphs, there's so much to learn. And I hope people show up to these programs with an open mind to not only learn, but unlearn things. And um, through all of the programs and initiatives and resources, I hope people walk away with a deeper understanding of how and why Black history is American history. Mm -hmm. And it is, It's, it's everybody's history. Um, Charday, we are so happy to have you on the show. You, you, you're always uh, a delight. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, Charday is our strategic enrollment communications and social media manager. She is many, many things. <laughs> That's just a shortened version of her title. But anyways, thank you, Charday, so much for being on the show. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Charday. Good to see you. All right, Tony, we got a few announcements we're going to need to go over uh, before we uh, wrap up the show. But uh, one of them I want to talk about, <clears throat> Innovation of the Year nominations. Okay, those awards, the Innovation of the Year nominations, close today. This award is a prestigious recognition for our community colleges throughout the country. So it's important for HCC to be representative, especially given our leadership in innovation. Please submit a nomination so that your work or that of others can be recognized. The deadline is today, February the 22nd, it's 5 p.m. So make sure you do that. We'll have some information in the post after our show. Uh, Also out at the Northeast College, Tony, they've got an auto tech fair that's happening. Yes, uh, HCC's Northeast Automotive Technology Program has a job fair uh, for those that are interested in that particular field. It's Wednesday, uh, that's this Wednesday, February, that's tomorrow, February 23rd, 10 to 1 p.m. So go there. Um, you can, they've got a lot of wonderful things to check out for that job fair. So uh, go there tomorrow. All right, and the Creative Writing Club celebrates Black History Month. HCC's Creative Writing Club joins Student Life to celebrate Black History Month's culture through spoken word and poetry by Eris Keon. That's happening 1230 to 130 p.m. Wednesday, February the 23rd. So that's coming up tomorrow. Uh, student of Abolition, Eris's poems are published with the West Review, Obsidian Lit, and Write About Now. She ranks number 10 in the 2020 Women of the World Poetry Slam. To register for this event, check out our post after the show. And the Business Pitch Workshop is going on as well, Tony. That's very important, especially for new small businesses or even old ones. I mean, sometimes you just need to know how to pitch what you've got. So HCC's Entrepreneurial Initiatives will host a business pitch workshop with David uh, Regenbaum. And uh, they've got a lot of things they're going to talk about. It's going to be February 23rd, 2.30 to 4.30, and it's virtual. Uh, The workshop will cover things like uh, how to use a PowerPoint. I mean, just because you know how to use it, you may not know how to use it well. And so he's going to show you some things about that. Uh, Key components of pitching, what information you should or should not include in the pitch. Uh, best practices, things like that. So it's going to be definitely worth your while to attend the workshop. Okay, community learning. Learn all about, you ready for this? Composting. HCC's Northwest College will present another green thumb gardening workshop via the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Program. It's happening 10 to 1130 a.m. Monday, March the 7th. It's online. You can learn all about composting 
Anything you wanted to know about composting, you'll learn it there. We'll have a registration link in the post after the show. I could say so many things, but I'm not going to. Go ahead. I'm so glad. I mean, I could paint my finger green. Maybe that'll help. No, no. Anyways, <laughs> uh, Reading Culture Club Scholarship. Uh, you want a scholarship? Here's a way to do it. HCC's Reading Culture is featuring Pakistan uh, with a book called I Am Malala. So you need to read that. Do two qualifying cultural events, either write an essay or do a creative project. And then you get to compete for $500 and a thousand dollar scholarship. So that's a great way to get a scholarship and learn about a new culture. Yep. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. You can still, believe it or not, get some credit hours in before the spring semester ends. You got to do it quickly though. It's very accelerated courses. I mean, you start the course, it's over like that. Well, not really that quickly, but you it's a very fast paced course. You can still get those hours in. That's what we're looking for. Uh, there are five ways to learn. Some of them are online. Some of them are hybrid. Some of them are in person where you can go to classes on an HCC campus. Uh, but make sure you register now. Go to hccs.edu slash apply. Tomorrow on the show, some uh, our continuation of Black History Month continues. Uh, Deborah McGoy, she's the uh, communications director for HCC Central. She's also on the committee for the Black History Gala, which is coming up Thursday. We'll talk to her. And uh, we're going to go back out to the Lone Star Flight Museum, Tony. Absolutely. Bessie Coleman, uh, she is in the Hall of Fame there. She was the first female African-American pilot. And I can't wait to hear her story. That's going to be wonderful. All right. All that and more tomorrow, live 10 a.m. up to the minute. We'll see you then.